Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and data sets and Z-Bowls are the topic for the day. They're fundamental in managing your data within ZFS. Data sets are more like enhanced directories with a few extra features. We're going to dive into those details of how they're different than directories and how important they are to your structure and when you should be using them. And we'll also talk about Z-Bowls and how they function as a virtual block device within the ZFS environment. I have a whole series of other ZFS tutorials linked down below, such as ZFS as a cow, ZFS and the RAID types, ZFS and the special VDEVs. So you can go through those videos as well to get a better understanding. This video is going to be broken into two parts. One is going to be a few slides where we talk about some of the fundamentals. Then we'll go into TrueNAS for a demo for how to add and create or change these inside of TrueNAS. But in general, they all apply to ZFS. Some of you may ask, why are you in a sling, Tom? Well, that's not relevant to the tutorial. So I'll throw that at the end of the video just to answer any questions for those that are curious. Now let's get started with this tutorial. Data sets and ZVOLs live within a ZFS pool. That pool can have a single VDEV. It can have multiple VDEVs. I've got other videos breaking down the different VDEV and RAID types. You can also have it living within multiple VDEVs along with some special VDEVs, such as a cache drive or a metadata drive. But those are not assigned to a data set or a ZVOL. They're used within the pool and the data sets and ZVOLs you build on top of the pool, which you can have many of each in any combination you'd like. Those take advantage of the underlying features that you've built within that Z pool. So this ZFS pool having, let's say some special VDEVs, some RAID Z1, a pair of those, that's all taken advantage of whether you create a ZVOL or a data set that is all living within there. What does not work is if you have a system with more than one pool, you cannot have the data set or ZVAL span multiple pools. That's not a function that's built in there. This is something that TrueNAS Scale is working on with Gluster, where you will take multiple pools across multiple different machines and use Gluster to create essentially a span across there. But we're narrowing in scope this just to data set and ZVAL, which live on an individual pool and whatever that pool is made up of. Now let's talk about the features of a ZVAL. ZVAL is short for ZFS volume and is a virtual block device within your ZFS pool. This virtual block device you can think of as a hard drive presenting as a virtual block device. That leaves the OS that you're attaching it to to decide what file system goes within that ZVAL. That does not mean you have any exact visibility. It is not going to be easy to see into it unless you have something that can mount it and read whatever that file system is, type is. This is also not a shared type of storage with certain exceptions of software that understands how to do sharing, such as if you use this as a target for virtualization and if you're using something like VMware, XCPNG, and many other virtualization platforms, they can share because they're handling the access to the block device so you can have more than one machine able to see this. This is not, though, where you're going to store normal file systems as you would with a data set, which we'll get to next. The advantage, though, is you can snapshot these and clone them. You can replicate and back them up using ZFS replication. They have compression on a per ZVAL basis. So for each one you create, you can choose the compression type. Deduplication at the block level. I say it at the block level because even though ZFS may be unaware that you formatted this with NTFS because you presented it to Windows, it's looking at the blocks and which blocks it can do deduplication at. So deduplication still works without understanding the file system that is being used for the ZVAL as it's presented to other operating systems. You can encrypt each ZVAL. They can be set up sparse, which means thick or thin provisioned. That means if there's a four terabyte ZVAL that we configure, do we want it to allocate all that space at once or do we only want to allocate what was actually used within those blocks? So if we have only one terabyte out of four terabytes stored, it doesn't take up four terabytes on the system unless you tell it to thick provision. It can actually only take up the amount that's actually used. So that is an option. There's advantages and disadvantages to using that. Uh, sync on or off. So if you need it to synchronize the writes, that is a per ZVAL option. And then the block size for different workloads, whether it's a database or virtualization, and it depends on the software that's tied to this ZVAL, there may be better optimization for one block size or the other. And primarily, you're going to only use these for local virtual machines. And that's going to be the hard drive for virtualization inside of TrueNAS. I've got a video on how to set that up, but you set up a ZVAL to attach this to be a actual 
hard drive for that virtualization system and iSCSI storage targets that can be used for any application that uses iSCSI. I have a couple of use cases. Virtualization is one way. Another way is going to be presenting it just as a virtual hard drive to Windows. I actually use that for my gaming system because it's quite convenient to have all the data stored and be able to expand this C file because it's another feature it does have can be expanded later and presented essentially as a hard drive to a Windows system. This works on Linux as well. It's whatever applications can use iSCSI. Now, the much more common use case is a ZFS data set, which presents like, but is much more flexible than a directory. They can also be nested in other data sets and create a directory like hierarchy within ZFS. And as far as when you do a share with these, it looks like a series of directories, but they have some extra features. And these extra features are sometimes why you will have several of them because you may wanna have different policies based on each data set and each name. Snapshots and cloning is still possible with each data set. Individually, this is a big reason you may want to have several because you may have different policies for data retention and being able to set that on a per data set means that particular, as the user may see it as folder, may have a higher frequency of snapshots and a lesser frequency on another one. Replication and backup using ZFS replication. Once again, it kind of goes to your data retention policies and how much data or how frequently you want that data to be backed up at snapshot. Compression on a per data set basis. Deduplication at the block level. This is still done per data set, and there are some advantages to maybe only certain data sets you want to do this for, but maybe not the entire of a set of data sets you have. Encryption settings for each one. You may not want your main system to have all data sets underneath encrypted with a password that's required at boot, but maybe you have one system and that once the system starts up and you want that particular data set to require a password to get further, that's a nice feature you can have. You can also have different sets of keys that auto unlock and those keys can all be nested within there for, once again, different security policies based on where you may be replicating and sending the data. Sync on or off, whether or not you need synchronized writes, that is a per data set option. Record size limits for different workloads. ACL sophisticated controls over file permissions. I've just done a recent file permissions video you'll find down below as well. And that file permissions allows you to go much more in depth and carry the extra metadata to set the different user permissions on there. And that is all set up on a per data set basis. Quotas and reservations, those are a couple extra features you can do. Now, this is the metadata special small block device. I'll leave a link to a video that Wendell from Level 1 Text did covering this. It's actually pretty slick. He's got an entire write-up on there. This says that particular data set should be indexed in one of those if you have them, special metadata VDEVs. There's some parameters and some thoughts you need for storage architecture when this has an advantage. For example, if you wanted to be able to put on a faster metadata special drive VDEV, a lot of the small writes and have that indexed over there, but there's a lot of precautions and thinking about it. It's a pretty in-depth write-up that Wendell has from level one. As I said, it's linked down below if you want to dive into that because it's not as simple as just adding it and it'll solve your speed problems. Now let's talk about how these work inside of Chernas and what they look like when you create them. So right here, I have my virtual disk and let's talk about using a ZVAL. Under virtual disk, I have this data set called ISO storage where I store ISOs that I want to use in my virtualization. Then we have this text Linux, and then we have this Tom's Ubuntu. And if we want to create another ZVAL, we can create it here. And we just go to the top and hit add ZVAL, give it a name. Let's call it test. Set the size and we'll say 1TIB. This is where we can force the size if we need it. Do we want the sync to inherit from the parent or disable it? We're going to disable it so we don't need sync on this. ZFS duplication on verify on those options are explained here do we want it to be set to read only do we want to set to hidden and then we hit save now there are some advanced options but not many it's just whether or not you want the snap vdev to be visible or hidden we'll just hit save and let it create this so now we have these three different z vowels in this one iso storage but what i'm going to show now is if we go to the mount location mount dozer virtual disk and we do ls la to show all you notice the iso storage data set but you don't see any type of ZVAL here. That's because they don't present to the file system, but they are indeed nested underneath here. And if we go back over into TrueNAS and we look go to virtualization, and we click on my one virtual machine here and we look at the devices, you can see that the disk that it's attached to, click the three dots and go to edit. It'll let me attach to the new one if I wanted to. There's the existing one that's good. This is another one I had here. And all the functionality, if I wanted to clone these or if I wanted to add another disk, so it was a disk and it would show up and I could add more than one disk to my virtualization. Now we go back over to datasets. 
and we go here to Tom's gaming desktop and we see it's presented as iSCSI. If we scroll down here, we can go into manage the iSCSI shares. And this is where you can create the associated targets for each one of these. We can click edit and I'm not going to break it by changing this target, but if you wanted to add more targets or use the wizard, you could build more iSCSIs that target this. This actually presents to my system. So here's the Tom Windows, and this is what allows me to present this to my Windows system and save all my games on here. So I don't have to have a big hard drive in there and my TrueNAS is connected at 10 gigs. So this actually works really fast. It's formatted in TFS. If I need to expand it, I can go in here and edit and expand that storage. So we go here to data sets, Tom Gaming Desktop. I'm only using two terabytes right now, but if I needed to, we could expand this to be even bigger. I could just change this to six and I don't need to force it, but I can then expand it out from there. How that expands on the other side is going to be dependent on the system you're connecting it to, whether or not it will auto expand or you'll have to actually do some type of disk management. Now, if we go all the way here to the top, this is our primary data set that everything gets nested underneath. And then we have several different data sets that I have, such as my archive versus my production one for LTS videos, or even under true charts here, because I have a few different things set up under that. I have fresh RSS and that, and I'm doing each one of these. And if I wanted to add another data set nested under here, I could create some app, put some comments, and I could set all the settings. So when I point an application at this, I would have all my granular control for this. Now you could create a series of folders, but I usually recommend data sets because as you have the apps tied to it, which it lets me know this data set is used by Fresh RSS, you may have different policies you want on a per app basis. Fresh RSS I find pretty important. I really like it. And I go over here to data pre protections and there's currently 337 snapshots because there's not much data changing, but I would hate to lose the data. So I have the snapshots themselves running very frequently and keeping them for several weeks, which means there's a lot of snapshots in there for this particular data set. Because each one's a data set, you can build a policy on that per data set basis. So you can decide what you do or don't want to keep inside of there. And because the snapshots only reference the change in data, they don't take up much space. Now, the other important use case for data sets, of course, is permissions. And I cover that in my permissions video and talking about how you nest the permissions and how if you want to handle the permissions via TrueNAS, via the users and groups, you're going to assign them each to a different data set so you can get that granular control that you're looking for. It is different, though, but you need to start with a data set when you're doing it with Active Directory. But I cover how to do it inside the TrueNAS UI in my permissions video. Hopefully, this clarifies the difference between a data set, ZVAL, why they're important, why it's really a great idea because there's not some limit where you can only create like five or ten you can create really as many of these as you probably have space for on your system so having everything in a series of hierarchies setting the permissions to automatically inherit this can help really get you on the way to building a good data structure for things and i love everything being nested in different data sets when we design things for clients or when we're designing it for ourselves just to keep the data very organized and me understanding what belongs where and having policies that are driven based on that hierarchy. Nonetheless, love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content from this channel. Now, as to why I'm in a sling here in July of 2023, I like to go off-roading on my motorcycles. I was riding, I lost control, hitting some mud and slid and managed to break several ribs and a clavicle, which means at least the next few videos are probably gonna be done inside the sling. I love hearing all the positivity from you. So if you have some comments or questions about all that, I don't know what the future of riding motorcycles looks like for me, but I know it's currently not in my immediate future while I take some time to heal. Thank you and take care.